Dude, it's gonna be in our way. Is he no, trying to collect water? <laughs> what? It's taller. He's for making it taller. <laughs> Why? Why? What is he doing? This is amazing. He's just tall enough. Oh my god. Yeah. Right. I gotta go wow. out. Watch this in action. Of course, he's gonna go talk to the old dude. Me, like, I, 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 I know what I know this guy. No, I don't, I don't know. About cameras. Yeah, uh, this one felt.
For number two, Ashley Kovach. Junior for number four, Rayla Smith. Senior defender, number seven, Captain Nina Kite. Junior midfielder, number 10, Ava Waleski. Senior midfielder, number 18, Kenny Collins. Senior forward, number 24, Cameron Rogers. Senior defender, number 25, Camille Walker. Senior forward, captain, number 26, Caitlin Killinger. Senior defender, number 27, captain, Kaylee Simpu. Defender number 31, captain as well, Emily Barak. And your sophomore goalkeeper this evening, number 38, McKenna Anderson. The Lady Mustangs are coached by Jamie Stewart, assistant coaches Amanda Donatelli, Dr. Harriez, Goma Ponderone, Serena Schlegel, Chris Lynch, and Bob Kovac. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and move your hats to the National Anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first round of the 2022 Whitfield Soccer Playoffs. Tonight, the Plum Lady Mustangs are faced off against the Kiski Area Cavaliers. With that, my name is Justina Rikini, and I'm joined this evening by Matt Leone, Nick Morrow, and the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Rick Barat. Plum was led by their head coach, Jamie Stewart, and Kiski is led by Melissa Sherrick. The Mustangs entered this postseason off of a PIAA semifinal loss last season to Mars. This Mustang squad has lots of impactful seniors on the team, but tonight, Ava Oleski is the impact player to watch. Expect to see Ava all over the field for the Mustangs. For Kiski, number seven, Devin Sonnefeld, the captain, leads the charge for Kiski. Devin, who plays defense and midfield, is all over the field for the Lady Cavs. So before the game gets going, any thoughts as we start postseason action tonight? Well, I think it's going to be a good game. And, you know, <clears throat> the Mustangs, you know, I think they had a good season. I think their only loss was to Latrobe, which was a shootout. 
and overtime, man. Overtime. Or into the into overtime, and you know I think we're gonna have a good playoff season, and I think it's just gonna keep keep letting the ball roll. Yeah, Plum hasn't given up a lot of goals, guys. Uh, you know, led by Pitt recruit Kaylee Simku in the back, play center back with my daughter Emily Barat, Nina Kite, and Ashley Kovach. So uh, the back line has been a stalwart all year for the Mustangs. So. Um, and their goalie play. So it'll be interesting to see how tonight goes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the Mustangs will be able to pitch another shutout. I mean, that, that goes a long way as we are ready to start the, the, the WPIL first round playoffs as Plum already comes out on the field. Nick Morrow has that all set up and, uh, you know, Plum does have an injury. Uh, you know, Annabelle Arin has a concussion, so we don't know when she'll be back. Camille Walker had a concussion. Uh, she's back starting. So, um, you know, Plum has number four, Rayla Smith, who's a junior, uh, and she hustles a ton. So we'll see a little bit different player than Annabelle. Annabelle's more physical player. They're both pretty fast. So uh, we'll see how the Mustangs react. And uh, they're going to put immense pressure, guys, on Maxine Crosby, the starting goaltender for the Cavaliers. Oh, yeah, she's going to face a lot of shots tonight, especially from uh, this offense, which we know is high-powering for the Mustangs. And away we go. And there's Rayla already with the ball, and she sends it over to Kaylee Simku. I'm sure the Mustangs are a little nervous also. Three straight years making it into the WPIL finals against the Mars planet, so we'll see if, it, if they have any nerves as they come out. And backing off that last point, Mr. Brother, there's a lot of pressure uh, that, you know, these Mustangs have faced over the past three years as well. Simpu passes it over to Nina Kite. Has to feel Dave Woleski drops it back for Rayla. Rayla's fighting it there. Good defense by the Cavaliers there. Number five, uh, Rachel uh, Spaniel. Caitlin's taking it up the field. She's making her run. Gets into the box, pass across. Oh, I think they call it offsides. Well, and, and see, that's that's the uh, trouble with soccer. You know that offsides <laughs> call. Maybe you know, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Brought knows what I'm talking about. No, you know, sure. offside it's is such a, a it's subjective a, call, Justino. You know. Yeah, and just a little question: What determines an offside or not? You know, I'm trying uh, to learn. It's the, the uh, last defender on defense. Yeah, where the ball is. Them, yeah. Your pass, the last defender. When the ball will. leaves that person as it's coming to that imaginary line, which seems to be slightly different per game. Yeah. So Ashley Kovach has the ball taken away. There's Emily Barat who cleanly kicks it out of bounds. Kiski throw in. Cavaliers finish fourth in the section, 7 10 and 1. Mustangs obviously finishing first in the section. That's number three seed. This is the three seed versus the 14 seed. As the Cavaliers send it into Mustang territory, Nina Kite clears the ball off to Rayla Smith and Ava Waleski there with a little bit of push on number two for the Cavaliers, Justino. Marley uh, goes a tech. She's a freshman on the field tonight. Crosby just waiting and she blasts it out of bounds. Nina Kite again will throw it in. Plum yeah. will look to make it to work the ball out of the back line with Kaylee Simku. She brings it up. She sends it over to Ashley Kovach. Ashley sends it over to Cam Collins, who is tripped. And it'll be free kick. Yeah, I think for the Mustangs, Mustangs. you and me both know Mr. Brown from watching and Matt from watching a lot of these games. The Mustangs are physical, and they're going to you know, make you uh, earn earn it every single play, You know, at, especially at midfield with Abel Leski and Cammy Collins. They're both very physical. Kaylee sure, absolutely. Crosby scoops that up. She has her first save of the game as Rayla Smith is able to intercept the ball, loses it. The Cavaliers have possession as Ava Waleski puts some pressure on the Cavaliers defenders. Crosby kicks it deep. Camille Walker sends it over to Nina Kite, over to Kaylee Simku, over to Emily Barat, back to Kaylee. And Kaylee goes forward. Cavaliers have the ball now. And they work it out of the back and they pass it back to Crosby. 
I'm putting no pressure on the goalie, just sitting back, which the Mustangs typically do put pressure. Normally with Annabelle Arhan, I believe. Yes. Brought, yeah. yeah, and from what I can see, another strength for the Mustangs, other than their physicality, is that they can pass the ball around and, you know, get it on all angles of the field. Sure, it's a senior-generated team. Mm -hmm. Kami Collins has it. She works it through, sends it over to Cam Rogers on the right side. Cam over to Camille Walker, taken away by the Cavaliers. And now they're going to go forward. I think we see the strategy here, the Cavaliers guys. Let's try to hit the home run and pass it deep and try to pressure the plum defense, which hasn't surrendered very many goals this year. Yeah, and I think that has to be a strategy, especially with this high-powered offense. You have to get your chances when you uh, receive them. Killinger sends it through the middle, picked off by the Cavaliers, and Camille Walker tries to settle it, loses it, and there goes number four, Cameron Coons. Yeah, and she has the ball taken away by Ashley Kovach. Cameron Coons is all over the field right yes. now for Cavaliers. Ava Waleski coming back on defense. It's number two, Marley Kozatek. Good play by Ava. Yeah, it's kicked out of bounds. Cavalier throw in. Cavaliers have the ball, and again, they're working out of the back, and I think they're content here as Crosby comes way out to the 30 and laces it in. And Kaylee Simku with a big header there. Plum getting out possessed here the last minute or two, guys, as you can see below on the clock. Good 34 play. and a half left. And there goes Cam Rogers flying after the ball. She puts a shot on goal. Crosby with a big save. Yeah, that's a big save by Crosby, who was playing at the 30 yard line, too. I mean, that's something, I mean, you don't really see against, especially a Plum uh, team. You know, she was playing really far up. Yeah, so, I mean, she is a little bit smaller in in stature, but she has been all over the field so far, six minutes in, guys. Mustangs in Kiski area territory now. And the Cavaliers kick it out of bounds. That'll be Mustang throwing. That's Ashley Kovach throwing in the ball. And the Cavaliers booted away as Emily Barat fights for position and the Cavaliers have it and they'll work it out of the back and send it over stolen by Camille Walker she settles it sends it over to Cami Collins back to Caitlin Killinger Caitlin another pit recruit along with Kaylee Simku sends it in to Rayla Smith and back to Crosby now we see Rayla pressuring the goalie and that's the first time the Mustangs yeah. have done that. And here comes Ava Waleski, tries to make a steal. She does. She kicks it back to Nina Kite. We'll see which way Nina goes. She throws it into the middle to Killinger. She sends it in. Cameron Rogers trying to make a run, worked off by the good play by the Kiski defenders. Crosby again is able to scoop that up with an easy save. Yeah, that'll be key for the Cavaliers, their defenders, especially against players like Caitlin Killinger and Cameron Rogers. There's Emily Barad passing it back and forth with Kaylee Simku. Over to Nina Kite. She brings the ball up to Rayla Smith. Rayla stymied on the play. Good play there by the Kiski Cavaliers, but Ava Waleski is able to haul it in as Nina Kite works it out to midfield. And there's a hard push there by number 13 of the Cavaliers, their defender, and Caitlin Killinger has it. And she chips it up ahead for Cam Rogers, who catches it in stride, is running forward between two Kiski defenders, over to Rayla Smith, she looks, she throws it on net, and Crosby's able to scoop that up with the save. Good save by Crosby there, especially with, you know, good opportunity for the Mustangs, she gobbled that up. Crosby with her fifth save already tonight, guys, as the Cavaliers just kick it out of bounds, that'll be a plum throw in. Yeah, she's been uh, really good so far tonight. She's gonna have to be against this potent offense. Who do we have subbing in here, guys? Uh, we have, I believe it's Serena Carnahan will be subbing in for and Kiske. And, and go ahead, Justina. Plum and Kaylin Coons will be subbing in for Kiske. 
So Serena Carnahan comes in for Camille Walker, and Camille just being cleared from her concussion. So Camille plays the first 10 minutes or so, nine minutes uh, for her first action in a couple weeks. Look good. And now sophomore Serena Carnahan, number 32 on your program, comes in. Number 21, Addison Bell takes it up the field. And Kaylee Simpkin is able to stymie that. And she is tripped from behind. So it'll be another foul on the Cavaliers, and Kaylee Simku will take the kick around the 15, 16 yard. Now, actually, referee's pointing to the 12 yard line. 12 there. yard line. And that was a good play by Southern Kim Q to get her to get in there and mess that up. Kaylee looks, sends it over to number 31, Emily Barat, who decides she's going to send it over to Ashley Kovach. A little too far for Ashley's reach. The Cavaliers will throw it in. Yeah, the Cavaliers have been able to hold on to the ball a lot tonight, too, Mr. Pratt, so far in this game. Yeah, so Ashley has it. She looks. She sends it over. No foul on the play. And there goes Cam Rogers. Yeah, oh, no, they do call yeah. foul. in here. the whistle, guys. <laughs> it was a little late there, so. It's okay. We're used to that in the football game. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, we know with late whistles, no flags are from last yeah. Friday's Plum's 34 to 21, 21 yeah. victory over the Hemfield Spartans. And then the Cavaliers kick it out of bounds, and Ashley Kovach will come over, throw it in. So scoreless, obviously, if you look at the stripe below, Cavaliers, Mustangs, 0-0s, zero were about 10 and a half in. Kiski might be out possessing Plum, out possessing Plum by a tad, but. Yeah, I think it might be by just a little bit, Mr. Braun. I mean, I don't, both teams seem to be having an even amount of possession so far. Sure. I mean, Plum's out shooting the Cavaliers though, early, as Killinger has it. And she she flies down the right side. She throws it across in the middle. Kayla Smith almost had it there. That ball is cleared. As Emily Barat comes up and she's able to steal the ball and throws it over to Cammy Collins and tries to get it back to her. And Cavaliers push it forward to midfield as Kaylee Simku throws it off to Serena Carnahan who unable to hold possession in the Cavaliers just systematically again work it back to Crosby who cranks one deep good play by Emily Barat to get a foot on that sends it over to Haley Simcoon there goes Emily she goes forward sends it off to Cam Rogers Cam throws it off in the corner to Killinger Killinger slices it down in the center Ava. Ava Waleski almost with a chance to ha to score, and there's shot on, shot wide, shot high, shot high. Yeah, Roger shot, shot that a bit high there. Marley Kozatek in the game for Kiski. Number 20, Sophia Harancia also subbing in for Kiski, and, and number five, Rachel Spaniel. Three substitutions for Kiski. So they're keeping their players fresh. The Cavaliers now come out, and that ball is stolen by Ava Waleski off to Nina Kite. Back to Kaylee Simku, over to Emily Barat. She looks, she sends it over to Serena Carnahan. She loses the ball, but Cami Collins is able to steal the ball back. Off to Caitlin Kilinger. Caitlin works in the middle of the field, stops on a dime. She looks, she sends one on goal, and right on the ground, and Crosby easily makes that save. Yeah, I think for the Mustangs, they're going to have to elevate it a bit more with this goalie tonight. Sure. She seems to be really good on the ground, catching those fly balls. And that's usually a uh, weakness of the goalie. They usually can get up high. It's hard to get low. The Cavaliers start to work it up the midfield, and Serena Carnahan has it off to Ava Waleski. Back to Serena Carnahan, and she goes forward. She's looking for someone to pass it to, and that's Cam Rogers, who's coming up with a head of steam off to the right side, drops it off to Killinger. Killinger streams down the right side, throws it in front. 
Crosby was able to deflect it out of bounds. Should have a now, corner kick for Plum. Yeah, and that'll be Plum's first corner kick. Oh, no, that's a goal kick. Goal kick. Oh, it is a goal kick. So that's out on Plum. So Crosby surveys the sit situation. See Plum's dropping back now and realize Crosby has a good leg and she just sends it into the end zone as the Cavaliers will work it out of the back. Cavaliers work it upfield. Call a foul there on Kiske. I didn't see what happened, guys. Uh, I don't really know what the call was. Didn't seem like anything really happened. No, but Kaylee Simku will have the ball and she has it right at the 40. She'll be able to put it in the box. And she does, and Crosby, she misses it. Rayla Smith, she shoots and scores. Rayla Smith with her first goal of the playoffs as the Mustangs take a 1-0 lead over the Cavaliers. And that was a good kick by Kaylee Simke, too, to get it right in the penalty box for an open opportunity for one of the Mustangs' uh, offensive players to get a, get a leg on it. Yeah, and I was just about to say that, that, that was a great kick and, you know, a great awareness by... Um, the Mustangs to be able to see that the goalie wasn't there and put it in. Yeah, so the Mustangs score at the 25-30 mark, and the advantage of the live stream being 35 seconds behind real time is that rebound just popped right out to Rayla Smith, and sometimes you're in the right place at the right time, and Rayla Smith was there, and she cranked it home as the Mustangs take a 1-0 lead 15 minutes into this WPIL first-round matchup. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that might be Rayla Smith's first playoff goal, Mr. Barat. Yeah, I don't know it if she scored last goal. year or not, but regardless, it's the Mustangs' first playoff goal. And that'll be a goal kick for the Mustangs, and Kaylee Simku will take it. She sends it over to Emily Barat, who passes it back to Kaylee, and Kaylee works it up. We have a plum substitution also, guys. We missed that on the goal. Number nines in Gianna Rivetta. She's a freshman playing a little bit of midfield here, Gianna. Plum's rotated now. They took Rayla out, and Killinger's playing the right forward position with Cam Rogers at center and Ava Waleski on the left. I do believe Killinger does play left forward most of the time, right, Mr. Mm -hmm. Broder? Is it? Yeah, I was going to say, probably with the injury to Annabelle. Sure. In the lineup around. So, yeah, so Plum trying to find the magic combination here. And that ball's sent up by Nina Kite, and there goes Ava Waleski, and she's making a solid run, and she's cleared to defenders as Cam Rogers is over, and Ava has it. She puts a shot on Crosby, and she makes that save right Crosby. into her stomach there, catches that. Crosby has been really good tonight for the Cavaliers. Sure, she was positioned extremely well there, shoulder center of the ball, and caught it like a fly ball. In a handful of times tonight, the Mustangs have showed how how speed is one of their strong suits and how fast they can get down the field. Sure, and there goes Gianna Rivetta. She comes up with the ball, and she's overtaken there by the Kiski defenders. Gianna stops, looking for someone to go to. Sends it over to Serena Carnahan. Serena s sends it over to, that's number 20 who came in for the Mustangs. That is um, Stammer, Megan Stammer. Also who a came freshman. in for, yes, who's a freshman also who came in for Ashley Kovach. So Kiski will inbound. Down one nothing. 23 minutes. Just under 23 minutes left in the first half. It is also encouraging to see two freshmen right now playing in this playoff game for the Mustangs. That's really encouraging for the future of this team with a lot of seniors leaving. Sure, yeah, with eight seniors, and uh, they all start. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you start 11, counting the goalie, so absolutely. There's Ava Waleski with the ball. She sends it up. Great pass to Cam Rogers as she comes flying in at the 10-yard line. And she stops. She has two defenders on her. And that's kicked out of bounds there by uh, number 23 of the Kiski Cavaliers. Kayla Mall. And we'll be calling her name a lot. She's 
right there playing center back as Kayla Mall is able to knock that one out of the box and Cavaliers put it out of bounds and Plum will inbound. Nina Kite fires it in over the defender's head as Cam Rogers and Ava Woleski were flying after the ball. Now Ava Woleski throws it in. Cam Rogers looks like her jersey was being held there as Nina Kite throws it into the box. Oh, and there's a goal there by Caitlin Killinger. She was able to just stop it on a dime and put it past Crosby. And the Mustangs go up 2-0. That was a really skillful play there by Caitlin Killinger. I mean, she picked it out of midair and, you know, finessed the uh, ball down around her leg and passed the goalkeeper. One goal scored by number 26, Caitlin Killinger. Yeah, that's a great goal by Caitlin to use her skill there to get that ball down and you know around the goalkeeper and then you know we filmed a lot of the games this year guys we haven't live streamed any of them but just from filming them for the coaches we know once Plum gets going mm -hmm. they, get, they going. get going yep. there's Cam Rogers just shot wide there's Crosby let that go we thought that was really close but uh -huh. she didn't really react to it so may not have been yeah well, I thought. mean yeah the whole crowd was oh yes so Crosby again who we have with already how many saves Matt eight. eight so plum peppering Crosby with shots already as we're almost at the halfway point of the first half we do see two subs ready to come in for the Cavaliers Cami Collins goes down sends the ball off to Cam Rogers It was Ava Woleski that got, looked like she got hit there, but they call a foul on. I think they called a handball on Cam handball, Rogers. Handball, okay. Yeah. Handball on Cam Rogers. So Crosby will bring it back a little bit almost to the goal line of the Mustang end zone. Crosby sends it away. Battle at midfield there with Cammie Collins. Megan Stammer is able to save the ball and kick it down into the Cavaliers' defense. And they just systematically blast it up as Emily Barat flags the ball and tripped on the play but sends it forward. Stammer has it, sends it off to Serena Carnahan who passes it up to Gianna Rivetta and over to Nina Kite. Tava Waleski cuts forward. Again, passes Serena. Good ball movement here by the Mustang. Serena has it. Throws it off to Killinger, who sends one inside. Tava Waleski, great save by Crosby. Rebound by Cam Rogers, just shot wide. And that was a great save by Crosby on Waleski there. I mean, really, just with the right leg, just kicked it out, or left leg, excuse me, kicked that ball right out. And guys, great ball movement there, there oh, yeah. by the Mustangs. And as you can see, if you're able not to make just two or three consecutive passes, if you can make four, five, six, seven, exactly, you get the defense chasing after you, and then there's a lane, and you send a runner in, one of your forwards, and two golden opportunities for the Mustangs to go up by three, stymied by Maxine Crosby, the Kiski goaltender who has nine saves already. Just keep moving it up the field back to their defense. A good ball movement here by Kiske as they send it back. And Cam Rogers now is going to pressure Crosby. She blasts it to midfield as Simku went up oh, for the header. Yeah. Yes. Nina Kite has it. She sends it up to John Rivette who lets it slide by. And Kiske again will play it out of the back to Crosby who seems to touch the ball on in 90% of this game so far. Plum getting good pressure from their midfielder. Serena Carnahan has it, stops on a dime, sends it over to Cami Collins, who passes it back to Megan Stammer, who sends it over to Serena Carnahan, over to Simku, over to Barat, back to Simku, 
and Kaylee brings it up. Kaylee sends it off to Gianna Rivette. And again, Mustang's good ball movement here. Send it through, and there goes Ava Waleski breaking in. She stops. She circles. She sends it over into the box. And oh, I can't tell. Is that a goal? Is that a corner kick? Might What's be a throw? corner. No, it might be a throw. Or it might is a corner kick. Yeah, it is. So Ava Waleski will take it. So we'll see if the Mustangs are able to convert here on their first corner. As the Cavaliers are able to clear it away. Kaylee Simku drops it and kicks it out of the end zone. Yeah, I think a big strength of this Mustangs team is their defense. They've been playing together for, like you said, four years now. So, you know, this defense is very experienced with, you know, a lot of seniors on it and, you know, uh, being able to protect that back line. So Maxine Crosby will blast it up. Intercepted by Collins. She passes it back to Simku. She's looking for an opening. Plum tries to make another run with Cam Rogers there, just out of her reach. And Crosby just scoops it up. Simku's able to flag down that ball. Justino and Plum will slowly try to move it up. Stolen by the Cavaliers, though. And then stolen back by the Mustangs. Caitlin's making her run now. There goes Killinger. She makes a move, and she got a little bit of a... So she kicked yeah. it off Kiski's defender there. Yeah, so that's definitely going to be a corner kick. Plum's second in the game, and... See number 31, Emily Barat. She'll come into the box here and try to work her way in to head the ball. She positions herself on the 10, and when Caitlin raises her arm, Emily sprints in. And Caitlin's shot goes over everyone. I think Stammer gets it there. Yeah, Stammer passes it back, but uh, Cavaliers are able to intercept and. Plum kicks it out of bounds, and the Cavaliers will throw it in. Looks like Camille Walker, guys, is ready to check back in. Yeah, it does look like that. She played the last ten, or first ten, and yes. she played the last ten here this first half. Emily Barat flags that down, throws it off to Simku. Has it stolen by the Cavaliers. Ooh. Shot wide there. You know, and I totally agree with that point that you said earlier with the, about the Mustangs' defense. They're definitely tough to play against, tough to get past. No, I agree. I mean, you have again, you have to be able to work it down the field and make four, five, six, seven consecutive passes to attack. Mm -hmm. There goes the Mustang sending Ava Waleski on a run, stolen by the Cavaliers. Gianna Rivette tries to flag down the ball. She's pushed to the side. That ball's sent in. Scooped up by the Plum goaltender. And we'll finally say her name tonight. That is Ken Anderson. Grabs the ball and Plum has it up at midfield and Kiski takes the ball and Camille Walker stymies that rush and Cameron Collins send it in deep. Mustang's putting a little pressure on there. It's Cam Rogers and Ava Waleski came up to put on some pressure and here goes the Cavaliers trying to send a forward on the run and good play by Megan Stammer to get that ball out of bounds. Yeah, Megan Stammer just kicks it off to the side and that'll be a throw in way deep in the Mustang territory. And sometimes on that play, that's that's really the best play there to, to make, especially when it's, you know, going real fast downfield and defend or offensive players are right on you. You want to just kick it out of there as fast as you can. Sure.
Mustangs clear it up. Caitlin Killinger has it. She starts off, and Ava Waleski's making a run. Great pass there by Ava Waleski, and the goaltender right comes the way goal. out. Oh, and I think both players go down. Crosby's hurt. Ava pops right back up. Yeah, that, and so that there'll be a, a stop in action there. there. Yard line. And it's been a physical game so far. Definitely with a lot of shoves and pushes, and both teams came out to play. Didn't see what happened there. Watch the live stream now. It was like the goaltender came at like the 20 yard line. There was Ava. Was Ava got, up. Ava got, Ava touched the ball first and Crosby came out and slid down and they collided. Looked like knee to knee. So it'll be a stop in action here as training staff sees What's going on with Crosby, who has nine saves tonight, who's, even though she's given up three goals, has made some great saves. So, boy, if she can't go, that really, I mean, down 3 nothing already to Plum. Plum hasn't given up three goals in a game all year. Um, it really makes this a difficult, um, or excuse me, 2 nothing. Yeah, three goals to win. I mean, that, I mean, that makes it difficult. Crosby's going to come off, and Kiski will have a substitute goaltender, guys. See who comes out in goal for the Cavaliers. They don't have another goaltender, no, guys, on not. their, yeah, on their roster. roster. So we'll see who they bring out here. You might have to use a field player. That's what I think they are doing here. Someone just changing in their goalie uniform, so... I think it will still be double zero, so. Kiski coach talking to the ref now. I don't know. Cavaliers, Lady Cavalier players are huddling now on the 26 yard line. See someone in a goalie uniform over there. Yeah, I, I saw who the, the number is though. Yeah, I see the green shirt. I don't know. Do not know who's going to come in for the Cavaliers. Plum now starts to move forward a little bit. Plum might get the ball where they had it at the uh, 25 yard line. See, it's double zero, but that's, that's the same number. That's right? the same numbers, yeah, Maxine so. Crosby. I have no idea who the new goalie is. Maybe we might get that to you uh, shortly. Good goal there by Caitlin. Caitlin Killinger, and I, and, I, and I think they don't have a goalie. I to think put I in. think that is right because I mean, on their roster here, they do only have one goalie listed so that may mean that Crosby is their only goalie Mr. Brown. So Caitlin Killinger gets her second of the game and she just blasts it in. Mustangs up 3-0 with 12.04 left to go and when you have to put a field player in net I believe it's they not did. a good sign. Yeah. So Rayla Smith just comes in, number four. Ava Waleski goes out. There goes Gianna Rivetta with the ball. Pass it to Cammy Collins. Gianna Rivetta has looked good so far in the midfield, guys, as Killinger has it. She stops on a dime. She chips it up forward. 
intercepted by the Cavaliers. Good play by Caitlin. Cam Rogers has it. She's looking. Yeah, another thing that's good for the Mustangs, I mean, you just mentioned Rivetta. She's played a lot of minutes in this first half, too. Her and uh, Stammer played a lot of minutes in this first half. And if this game, the way it's going with any indication is... Um... Oh, we do have a substitution. Ashley Kovach came in for Megan Stammer a couple minutes ago for the Mustangs. by the Kiski goalie. Yes, it was a good save by the Kiski goalie. Especially, I, I believe it is a position player too, Mr. Braz, so that, I mean, it's tough for her back there to be playing a position she's not even used to. Kozatek makes a run. Shut down by SimQ. And I'm trying, I'm looking over on Kissy's bench, trying to ind indicate if Crosby will be able to come back into this game. And yeah. It doesn't really look like she'll be able to. I mean, after that collision, that's a tough collision right there. Corner kick for the Cavaliers. Saved yeah, there good by. save by Anderson, guys. That's something you want to continue to see for the Mustangs goalkeeper. Is it? I believe it is a new goalkeeper for the Mustangs this year, McKenna Anderson. So, you know, she, you know, getting used to the postseason action is good. You know, getting some saves. Mayla Smith now pressuring the goalkeeper. over to Nina Kite. Saves it from going out of bounds. All goes out of bounds. Yeah, and she was under pressure there, and that might have been a smart move, even though you're giving Kiski the ball. Yeah, in soccer, it's a good move to try and get it out of bounds sometimes. As SimQ plays it over to Cammy Collins, intercepted by Kiski. Out of bounds by Kite. Kiski throws it in there. Number 14, Madison Batchar tries to save it. Ball goes out of bounds. Nomi Barat takes it up to Ashley Kovach. Cammie Collins finds a seam for Killinger. Takes it back, regroups, and takes it over to Cameron Rogers. They're going to call a foul there on Rogers. Looks like she ran into the Kiski player. And Rogers, she's, she's been having a good game. You know, she's been making plays. We said her name a lot tonight. Yeah, pretty aggressive. Too yeah. The Mustangs, yeah. Definitely also showing her, her speed and using that as a weapon. Kovac passed over to Camille. Finds its way to Peyton Buffoon. Buffoon, excuse me. Emily Barat passed it back up. Ball goes out of play. And that, I think that's a smart move to get, you know, the defenders all in the area and in, into the right position. Throws it back in. 
Cameron Collins sends it back out. Camille Walker fighting for possession. They're going to call foul there. Now Kiski will have a free kick near the box. Dangerous. So what was, what was the foul? It's a push. Sometimes when you get a little too aggressive, they'll call. It's pretty much judgment calls in soccer, so even worse than football, Matt. <laughs> Kiski awaits their free kick. To the Mustangs building a little wall. Yeah, Mustangs trying to build a wall and get to every Kiski offensive player. That ball's kicked up and out of play. I think that might have been a field goal. Yeah, it might have been. Tie the game up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mia Narda subs in for the Mustangs. Another front, or excuse me, a sophomore for the Mustangs. I think that's SimQ will take the kick. SimQ has a big leg back there on defense. Goes over to McKenna Anderson, who picks it up. Passes it to SimQ. SimQ takes it down the field. Camille Walker takes it from SimQ. Kiski gets it back into play, though. Emily Barat looking for a play. Kiski intercepts it again, and good play by Camille Walker to get it out of play. Kiski has had the ball more since that last plum goal. Um, you know, keeping it, making sure that they, you know, keep it in their territory. Okay, was Sim Q pass it back. Goes yeah, out the, of play. The Mustangs defense, they're using the sideline as their benefit. You know, they're up by three goals, and, you know, they want the game to move at their pace. Is he making a move in? Killinger moves it up. New goalie for... Kiski area just found out from Mr. Brat Sophia Ranica. Another Sophia Ranica, excuse me. Another penalty on the play. Free, yeah, free kick free. for the Cavaliers. So we are under, or we have four minutes left to play here in the first half. Saved by McKenna Anderson. Mr. Brunt went on a journey over there to yeah. get that player's name. Ran over, yeah. <laughs> Sophia, Sophia Haranic. Yeah, Haranica. Haranica, excuse me. She's a sophomore. She has the blue penny on. Felt bad interrupting the Kiski Cavalier coaches, but there's one goalie listed on uh -huh. the roster. And we said that. Uh -huh. <laughs> we said, we said, boy, what happens if that goalie gets hurt as we talked? before the game and we're like ah well yeah, you know how often do you see that yeah. me, and me and nardo making me a run nardo making a run and again the mustang showing that speed that they have and using it to their advantage you know what's interesting with the mustangs guys i don't know if you talked about this as i w went on my journey to the kiski area cavaliers sideline but they um the mustangs will not run up the scores we've seen some you know yep. boys and girls games you know i mean coach stewart knows like you know the, the defense is you know unless something goofy happens and they're playing against a juggernaut like moon or mars you know let's play some of the uh younger younger players and we've seen a lot of them tonight as everyone's getting in to the action Sable Waleski sends it up just out of the reach of the plumb, I couldn't see who that was. That was Number Leonardo 12, Leonardo there, yeah. up there, and now playing that center forward position. Rayla Smith off to the left, and Caitlin Killinger off to the right. So now we have Ava Leski at midfield for the Mustangs, which is what she's played all year. Yep, it's her main position. Mm -hmm. So as you can see below, so we're approaching halftime. I would say Plum with a comfortable. Yeah, I would say comfortable three nothing. Three lead nothing right lead. Free kick for the Cavaliers. So 
Mustang's taken, lofted up. Stolen by Cammie Collins. She's looking for someone to make a run. She throws it off to, couldn't tell, the Kilnger yeah. sends it up. Leonardo takes a shot. As a, she shoots and scores. That was Ava oh, Waleski. Was it Waleski? Yeah, it was Waleski. Ava Waleski with her first goal of the postseason. Yes, it was Ava. Yeah, it was a good correct. play by Ava. Yeah, number 10, 12. It's, it's close numbers there. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, Mr. Brock. Mustangs now take a 4 0 lead. Killinger with an assist. So with 121 left here in the first half, Plum with a 4 0 lead. So that ball sails wide here. It's going to be a little difficult now for the Cavaliers. I mean, you have a field player in playing goalie, Maxine Crosby, who made nine saves early, gave up nine goals. And that girl's elbowing Rayla Smith there, and she turns around out of frustration. Yeah, and gets the call. Yes. Sometimes, sometimes showing your frustration gets the ref's attention. Sure, you know, and that was number yeah. five there, uh, Rachel Spaniel. Spaniel, who's, and again, you know, you come here to plumb, anything can happen, and you're down four nothing in the first half. It doesn't go the way you want it to go. So, the clock's ticking here as we're under 30 seconds, 25 seconds as Nina Kite, number seven on your program, will throw it in. Ava Waleski sends it over to Serena Carnahan. Plum may be looking to chip one into the box, but stolen by the Cavaliers. They just send it forward, and that will be it for the first half. Number 14 there for the Cavaliers. There's a little bit of an elbow in that Emily Barat's back. Madison Batchard. Yeah, so you can tell the Cavaliers aren't, aren't really happy, but, you know, Mustangs... You know, start off a little slow, guys, but when they pour it on, it comes on, and they take a 4 nothing lead into halftime.
Yeah, I remember. For the, to the second half, and Mustangs hit the ball. <laughs> Actually, Kovac. Or, yeah, and we want to make sure, Matt, that you know the Mustangs obviously don't start off flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, and and um. Mustangs are passing the ball around to start the second half. Definitely keeping. Kids keep on the on their feet and on the edge and say so the Kim Kim Q's gets the pass pass to number. Yeah, it's Cammy Collins who sends it forward to Caitlin Kellinger who has the ball. She slices down the left side, comes in tight, she shoots, just misses wide right. Yeah, it looks like Crosby is back in the game for Kiski. Yes, Maxine Crosby, who bounced back from that injury, is back in net. It's a goal kick for Kiski. <gasps> right around the 35. I just killed B. <laughs> just want to point that out to everyone real quick. That is the third bee I've killed in the press box today. So hopefully more. Yeah. <laughs> They're all over the place. They don't mess with us. So we call a foul there on the Mustangs. And Kiske will take a free kick around the 45 yard line. Justina, thank you for pointing that out. Appreciate it. He's pointing at my shoes like I'm on fire. Thank you, Justina. It's always something in the press box. Cavaliers have it. They crank a shot on goal. And that, and that shot goes wide. And Plum has a goaltender change. I don't know if you guys said that also. We have uh, freshman uh, Malena Smith, number 40, 40, excuse me. So, so Kaylee passes it off to Emily. And Kaylee Simku starts the, the march up. She sends it up to Cam Rogers, who turns and heads up. Off to Cammie Collins, who lofts it down. Oh, miss hit there by the Cavaliers as Rayla Smith hustles. And that'll be a plumb throw in deep in the end zone here. And I don't think the Cavaliers guys are going to get five goals to win this game. But Maxine Crosby can't keep them in. Stellar first half with nine saves. It's Cavalier systematically kick it out. Emily Barat stymies that, and she has the ball at the 35. She sends it up to Ava Waleski, who works it around to Camille Walker. Emily kind of hovering here. And there goes Cam Rogers. She tries to go one on three. She stops on a dime. Caitlin Killinger has it. Emily Barat still staying up from her center back position, and now she drifts back. Seems like she might want to be goal happy. Yeah, and what you said about Crosby, she had nine saves, and I think she only let in two goals. Three goals. Or three goals. So. Now, she, you might be right. She might let in two. Two. Yeah, Justino says two as he's working the camera now. So the Mustangs work it in, and Crosby... Easily, I think we got to count that as a save, guys, because if she doesn't stop that ball, that goes in. That's on net. So there goes Cam Rogers to make some move, comes down in the end zone, and that'll be a corner kick for the Mustangs. So Kaylee Simku will stake back. Mustangs go to their corner formation. 
Yeah, and Rodgers has been put in pressure on Kiske's defense all sure. game. And we, we said her name a bunch tonight and probably said a lot more. And Killinger sends it in the box. And Kiske's able to stop it, and they clear. And Kaylee Simku will flag that down, and she starts forward. Stops on a dime, passes it off to Ashley Kovach, who sends it in, stolen by the Cavaliers, who send it forward, but that ball will go out of bounds. <laughs> We're five minutes into the first half. Mustangs with a 4-0 lead. First round of the W. P-I-A-L soccer tournament. SimQ gets the ball passing it up. Ashley Kovac is able to hit it. And Kaylee's able to flag it down. 31, Emily Brought went out on that last possession. And that's number 20 with the ball. Megan Stammers came in, played a little bit of center back. ball stayed in there for a long time and I think Smith accidentally caught it on accident but then dropped it real quick there's a long ball plum staying on side Killinger trying to intercept it the Cavaliers just kick it out of bounds. Yeah, and the Mustangs are playing this game at their pace. There's no pressure on them to, you know, keep scoring or, you know, keep. keep no, and you're up for nothing, and, you know, well, there's a shot on goal, and Crosby makes the save. You don't know if when's the right time. It's the 32-minute mark. You pull out the starters. You don't want to risk in injury at all, you know, and, and play some of these young players to get some valuable playoff minutes. And like you said, we said earlier, there's eight seniors and they're all starting. So getting some of the young guys in there and giving them experience, it's always helpful and good for the future. Sure, absolutely, Matt. So we'll see what happens now as, you know, the, the time starts to dwindle away here. Now, obviously, if Kiski's able to get a goal, that might change the philosophy. But if Plum's able to get a goal, different is... Plum comes flying up the field. There's Rayla Smith is on the right side. She has the ball from Cam Rogers. Rayla streaking down the right side. She sends it over across. Good save by Crosby. Cam Rogers trying to put it in. Ava Waleski stymied again by Crosby. I mean, without Crosby, this score is probably... Justina's already shaking his head, so he knows what I'm going to say here. It's at least 6 nothing minimum if not seven and that save right there that was Kiski's 14th save of the night Cavaliers loft it up as Ashley Kovac just kicks it out we got two subs guys coming in for the Cavaliers can't see their numbers Got 
number one, Matt. And then it's number one, Marley Kozatak. And number 20, who played goal. And that's Sophia Hernika. Hernika? Haranka. Haranka. My bad. Yeah, and she played goalie at the end of the first half for the Lady Cavaliers. We have two subs ready to come in for the Mustangs also. As Rayla Smith has it. She's stymied there by number 15 of the Cavaliers. That is uh, Brianna Finney. Plum, two substitutions coming in. As Camille Walker comes out and Rayla Smith comes out. <laughs> Looks like Serena Carnahan and Gianna Rivetta coming in. Kaylee Simpkins is able to flag it down. with the ball. She sends it up to Cam Rogers, who's on sides. And there goes Ava Waleski. It's actually a two on zero as they separate. And Ava puts it in off Crosby's hand. And that's Ava's second goal of the game. And the Mustangs take a 5-0 lead at the 28-59 minute mark. And I think you're going to see <clears throat> some massive substitutions now for the Mustangs. And as I say that, Ava, as I say that, Emily Barat pops back in. <laughs> so the Mustangs seem well in hand to advance to the second round of the WPIL playoffs to play the winner of the Hampton Talbots and the Montour Spartans. Spartans, right, Justina? Montour Spartans, right? Mm -hmm. Justina is now is going to get an update on that score so we can tell that to our viewers as we speak. And that's a really good first-round matchup. Both, team nur both teams nur nursing some injuries, but Hampton being the higher seed, the sixth seed, versus the 11. And Plum's prime pressure getting into Kiski's zone and Kitsy he just kicks the ball out of bounds. <laughs> Collins will throw it in for the Mustangs. <laughs> Crosby passes it to number one. Marley goes at that. Plum shoots and scores for the sixth goal tonight. And that was her third goal of the night, Kaylin Killinger with the goal. So Mustangs looking dominant here in the first round, 6-0. And we're joined on the head and set now by two of my current students, Ben Pittman and Lucas Pittman. Hi, guys. How are you? How was soccer practice tonight? It was good. It was good. How are you doing, Miss Broad? Real good. Real good. So did we learn anything new tonight, Luke? Uh, nothing new. Just going over some combinations for the game, getting ready for Wednesday, looking good. Against the South Fayette Lions, huh? Mm -hmm. Little revenge game there when Zach was a senior. They came in here and upset us in overtime, correct? Was an upsetting game, but we're looking forward, and I think we're ready. No, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's it. And that's uh, Wednesday night. Oh, there goes Cam right Rogers. She sends it up. Oh, and she scores. Nice touch by Rogers. What a great touch. Yeah, good touch by Cam Rogers, and it makes it... 7 nothing, and your dad would understand this reference, guys. Uh, 
if you're a Penguin fan, that's a chili goal. Yes. Yeah, because one of the is. Penguin games back in the day, that seventh goal, you got a free bowl of chili at Wendy's. <laughs> so that's definitely the uh, the chili goal. He loved those for sure. Yeah, well, you haven't missed much. I appreciate you joining the broadcast. Always. We um, uh, started off a little sluggish. I mean, almost mm -hmm. sort of like you guys. I don't know yeah. if it was butterflies, yeah. first game. Yeah, a little nervous first game. But a little nervous, kind of testing out the opponents. Yeah. Uh, Plum scored 15 minutes in, made it one nothing, And then uh, it's easy to remember the goalie's name, Maxine Crosby, mm -hmm. for the Kiski area oh, Cavaliers. Wow. Yeah, so she had nine saves early on, but Ava Woleski wow. collided with her in the 30-yard line when it was 2-0, uh, 2 or 3-0, and then she was out for the rest of the first half. And on Kiski's roster, guys, um, they do not have another goalie listed. Oh, wow. So they had to put a field player in. Wow. And so Plum jumped out to a 4 nothing lead, and then obviously three quick goals here to start yeah. off the second half. And uh, it's been a dominant performance here as we're at the 25-minute mark now. Um, plums look good. Plum uh, looks very dominant currently. That is very unfortunate for the Cavaliers losing their keeper, though. Boy, and there goes Cam Rogers again, again. just flying past the defense. Oh, the goalie just gets there right before she got there. And Crosby was, uh, I guess you can say a save. That probably would have been on net. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> we'll give it to her. There goes Kaylee Simku to... Good defensive play right there. Yeah, and, and you see that a lot, guys, and you know that. You know, you can body a little bit the yeah, uh, they call yeah. get positioning the there, shielding the ball. Thank you, Ben. And, you know, shield the ball and prevent the uh, offensive person from getting it. So. so the Cavaliers, obviously, with a steep hill to climb, down 7-0. Yeah. I, I don't think Plum has given up eight goals all season. No, so no. They've um, been very solid all year round. Cavaliers able to work it in, but Emily Barat scoops it up, chips it up. Looks like the Cavaliers really can't get anything going currently. No, you know what, Ben? Uh, early on, uh, they worked it actually from midfield and worked it back to the goalie. And, and you can see now, you can't see because Nick Morrow's filming, but you can <laughs> see how she's playing outside the box and she's been out by the 20, yeah. 25 yard line. Almost is that extra. Oh, that's a good break ball by Abel Lasky. Oh. Whew, offside. Very offside. close. That was very close call. She definitely would have been in there if that wasn't called. Yeah, and you know, that's the advantage of playing the goalie. Yeah. You yeah. Know, 20, 25 yards out uh, like a, to like prevent a, that yeah, run. Yeah, little sweeper keeper. Sure, sweeper keeper. I like that. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> sweeper keeper. A little annoying to play against, but you got to do what you got to do to prevent goals. Sure, and you know, that obviously prevents the the long ball from happening. And you know, uh, I mean, just like you guys a little bit, I mean, you got if you have speed on the top, speed kills. Oh, uh, yeah. I was actually uh, taken out by a sweeper keeper currently yeah, this year. <laughs> <laughs> Killinger. Uh, good a, save by Crosby. Yeah, good save there by Kate, or good shot there by Caitlin Killinger and Crosby again with a save. Another so save. We have that plum or we have the, any of the combination of um, goaltenders for the Cavaliers with 16 saves. Yeah, Justina just told us uh, Franklin Regional and South Fayette. That's the 8-9 matchup, correct? 0-0 zero, zero with 20 minutes left. Wow. That could be huge. Yeah, because the winner... Is this takes the, on Mars. Oh, oh, wow. So, yeah, this is the 314 matchup. Um, Plum plays the winner of Hampton and Montour. Plum beat Montour earlier in the year 2-0. Uh, Hampton nursing some injuries, though, as is Montour. Actually, two girls that Emily played Arsenal with. Uh, one's going to CMU, uh, Severia. She is, she's out for the year she's for out. Montour. That's so, wow. Mm. Here comes Plum again. So Good turn by Rogers there. there. There's uh, Megan Stammer up from her defensive end, and again, cross the easy save there as that trickles to the net, and she lost it up. And that's going out for, oh, never mind. Oh, she kept it in. Yeah, well done Nina by Kite. Kite. Well done. Yeah, Nina kept it in over to Kaylee Simku to Emily Barat and up to Cami Collins. 
And we saw Plum make, I mean, you guys obviously were practicing on the baseball field. Yeah. Plum had this one possession, guys. They made maybe eight, nine, ten consecutive passes. Really? And sprung Ava Waleski in, and Crosby made a great kick save. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, it was like as you, a hockey reference there. It was, would have been a ten-bell save. Good turn by number four. Yeah, that is... Uh, can go straight to the keeper. combination play there and the um, lucky pass there oh now, Justina just gave us an update uh, Mars zero is the number one seed PT zero wow at oh. halftime half wow which you know, that'd be like Moon being done, or you yeah. guys being done. Yeah. Like, yeah. And what would it be? I don't want to, no bad juju here or anything. <laughs> but, like, if you guys were tied with North Catholic 0-0 zero, zero at halftime, first yeah. of all, after the, <laughs> would you pull the team aside or the coaches go first? Just, I mean, I'm not saying this to be funny because we're obviously live streaming yeah. right now, but, like, how do you think it would go down? Would the coaches talk first? Would they give you guys, the senior captains, the opportunity to talk? Um... I'd say if it's during the game, definitely the senior captains, but if it's halftime, oh, Coach Rapp's laying it on us. Yeah. We are getting <laughs> screamed at. Yeah, I would not be surprised about that. And then year. I know Ben and I would definitely hear it from our dad for uh, sure. Yeah, you get it like double whammy uh, yeah. from a coach's perspective mm -hmm. and from a father perspective. He's getting right. He got in my face that game too. A oh, good win. Did he really? Yeah. <laughs> good pass. With the cross and another save by Crosby. Uh-oh. She just lofted it out there. Cavaliers weren't, Lady Cavaliers weren't ready. You can see what I say when they're just trying to play long ball there, yeah. you know. And again, when, when you're playing against Plum, that's, it's hard to do and work that ball down the field, yeah, that's, you know. That's what North Catholic was trying to do against us also, just couldn't get anything going. There it goes. Well done by Sam Q to break yeah. the line. And then Serena Carnahan, sophomore. Who actually has a twin brother, Zach brother. Carnahan. Yes, who, who plays play, on your who, team. Who plays yes. on the boys' team. Yes, hey. and that's Parker's uh -huh. teammate for AFFC. There's a lot of AFFC guys, yeah. actually. Yes, there is. Gage, Gage Noah, Noah Smith. Smith yeah. yeah, Zach, Parker. Yeah, there's... There's Some at least four. There, yeah, for sure. sure. Now, you guys' cup was, you guys played where? Where you, where'd your dad coach? Hotspurs? Hotspurs, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, how many Hotspurs players are on Plum Team? Is it just the two of you now? Uh, Ethan Rose. Ethan Rose. Ethan? And Nate Morrell. And then Colin McKinley and Tyler Schreckengross used to play, but now they yes. play at BVB. BVB, new club, yeah. Yeah, new club. New club, yeah. pretty good club. Pretty successful so far, yeah. Good header by the Cavaliers, and I'll be out on the Mustang. So the ball hits the Kubota. So Nina Kite throws it in. Boy, Plum is just all over that there. Rayla Smith hustling after that, and... Nina will throw it in again around the 35-yard line. Camille Walker, her first action in a couple weeks, guys, trying to get the ball. Uh, yeah, I heard she was out with she's the concussion. Yeah. Quite a bit. It's good to have her back. How about uh, oh, we got some pressure from Plum. Oh, it's a heavy touch from the keeper, but well done. This what are you going to say, Ben? Go ahead. How about uh, Annabella Ren? How What's the Concussion. Concussion, she too. Concussion to out at least this game and potentially the next game. Yeah. Hopefully she can make a return. Sure. She's been one of their top goal scorers, correct? Good move. Yes. Rayla off to Serena Carnahan, pulls it back. Good turn. Good pass. Works it to Camille. Working it up nice. Stammer. Stammer intercepted. Play Plum Good recovery by though. Carnahan. Just, it just seems like Kiski cannot catch a break from Plum at all. 
No, and it's been the reoccur. I mean, besides a couple stretches, guys, that's yeah. the reoccurring seam here. Yeah, just not a bad ball here, actually. No, it's good uh, chip Kiske's ahead. on a break oh. here. See what they'll do with it. You know, Kite's keeping her Nina to Kite's the. Kite's keeping her well. Yeah, keeping her to the outside. Good pass. Kiske oh. yeah. still has it. Good play by Camille to force that ball out. Now Kiske will work it. And that is. Is that a Kiske? Cow's yeah, ball. Oh. Yeah, I thought, yeah, that I thought she kicked <laughs> a little confusion there. Yeah. Luke, if you guys were here and watched the game Friday, were you, guys, were you here Friday? Yeah. Uh, the holding, the non holding call on Nelson when, oh he, my I, goodness. when he held his jersey. Uh, I can't yeah, believe that. Yeah, you don't want to watch our broadcast. I was like, how is that a no <laughs> penalty flag thrown? There were some very questionable oh, calls yeah. that Yeah, well, no calls because they didn't uh, call anything. They were not calling a single thing. But I heard actually that um, the football team still has a chance for playoffs. Actually, yeah, you know what, Justina, Justina and I went through it today. I mean, my daughter said, yeah, they still can get in, and but we went through it. There'll probably be two teams from the third section. If yeah, Plum, Plum cannot get ahead of Franklin. Yeah, Gateway and Penn Trafford. Mm -hmm. So it'd have to be four teams yeah. from the second section too. So that means only two teams from the top. The third team would be Justina who was the third place team in that first section was it Peters Peters their overall record if they lose and they can would be six and four and Plums would be five and five so it's up to the committee but I think the the telltale sign is Plum lost to South Fayette by 14 and Peters beat South Fayette by 14. Really? So if Peters has one more win unless I'm misreading something I don't know how you can put plumb in but both you guys and my daughter said as Emily Barak goes on a run yeah th the they can't I don't know how they can get in I was hearing that if um Franklin Franklin um beats Penn Trafford this Friday and um Hempfield oh, I forget the other one I know I've yeah Hempfield played Justina who's Hempfield play everyone plays a section game except for plumb Oh, yeah, no, if, if Hemfield beats Norwin and Franklin beats Penn Trafford, I think they... Does well, can Plum like move up the third? I think they, they could potentially move up the third there. Oh, uh, that might be it then. Be I and think. then if they can slot in at the third seed, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's it because then Plum would be third. Mm -hmm. They can still take, you know, two from the bottom, yeah. the third section, three from the top, three from the middle. Yeah, I think that's exactly how it works. So we have here 13-13 left, 7 nothing. Looks like a football score, honestly. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that to be insulting, but yeah. when you look on the board, yeah, you see 7-0. Like you're, you're making it. It looks like a touchdown score. Yeah. Good ball of the year. It goes Rayla. Is that deflected? Or? Uh, no, goal no, kick. No, they call kick. goal kick. They call goal kick. Will we see any more goals in this game? I don't know. Both teams have been seen just kind of relaxing right now yeah you know and we talked about it earlier when do you pull the starters there's yeah. i mean yeah. listen like you know it's kaylee's senior year emily's senior year nina's senior year you know camille's senior there's eight seniors that yeah. play you know you start working like emily came out at the beginning of the second and she came back in you know i mean if you if you win seven three does it does it matter like you don't want to risk injury yeah you know because i mean if you lose kaylee simku or emily yeah that's crucial with, with 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 when you're down right now maybe one other yeah. you know like it's so like you guys you know if you get a couple bumps and bruises you know not that you were going to whip on south fayette or no. you know walk to the through the playoffs but i mean every game's a different challenge but yeah. you know when it's always i mean you see it in sports all the time when's the right time to pull the start yeah make sure everyone's healthy sure i mean definitely i mean i'd say our coach is probably thinking what um coach jamie's thinking right now it's always like 
as defense, it's always rewarding to bring home a shutout to the team. So I, I understand why he's leaving the starters in for now, but. I, oh, yeah, sure. That's important. And you want everyone to feel good. Yeah. You know, about where they're at. Yeah. Yeah, but I definitely agree with you, Mr. Raw. There is definitely a limit when the starters have to get off and make sure everyone's healthy to prep for the next game. Because, like, like you said, every game's a bigger challenge, stronger team. Not, not saying Kiski's not a strong team, but sometimes the farther you go in, the harder the games get. Sure. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The further it. you get, I'm sure the starters will have to stay in the whole game. So oh, sure, and you guys know that. Like, yeah, when you sure. play... You know, Parker gone in one or two varsity games, yeah. you know, as a freshman, you know, and a little bit more for the sophomores. But, you know, you want to balance it out. It's also your senior year. Exactly. You know, you want to play as much as you can. When's the right time? You know, sure. Good ball by Sim Keita, 12. Good dribble. Good. She's and in. She cuts through. Well done. Lord. That's number 12. That's me and Nardo. Nardo with the finish. Good feet there from her. That was a well-worked goal by the sophomore. So that makes it 8-0. I think here you might see some wholesale substitutions. I see yeah. Barat and Simcoop just jogging back. Yeah, probably yeah. About the time where yeah just like I mean, well. it might be time. There's no reason to, to with under going. 10 minutes left, we'll see what Coach Stewart does here. You know, and then it's another balance also. If you can't just throw in, you know, a lot of the varsity substitutions, because if they get hurt and yeah. there's any let up, then, yeah, you, no you know, then you, match, yeah. yeah. You're right, Ben, you have no depth, so. Sometimes in the playoff, that depth is crucial because you never know like when those players that usually don't rely on will come up big for you. Exactly. Sure. I mean, you know, Ben was hurt last year, yeah. you know, so that opened up, uh, you know, starting a whole, yeah, them. starting position. And, you know, the ones that filled in picked up a valuable time. You know, but you've had injuries this year to various players have missed some time also. Yeah. Luckily, right now, everyone's doing fine. Yeah. Well, which is huge. Which Unf is yeah. Good. Unfortunately, though, against Penn Trafford, we had Austin Kolonkowski, who tore his ACL. His ACL, which is unfortunate for yes. one of our first subs coming on. Of course, we wish Austin, obviously, the best yeah. and quick recovery. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, I'm sure your dad will tell you, if you tore your ACL, you know, that was a year oh, and that's yeah. it you know now you know you can usually recover eight nine months yeah you know if therapy goes well that is not a easy recovery though no well when i tore my acl and you guys are going to laugh at me when i <laughs> tore my acl hurtling the log jammer line in kennywood <laughs> um which i find when i say log jammer uh in a couple more years, everyone will say, well, what's the what's log, log, log jammer? Yeah, what's that? What's that? A Kennywood ride, you know, in the, in the logs and got wet. No, I have yeah, no idea that what that way. is. But if you're over 40, they take a cadaver's ACL. So my recovery was faster. Like yeah. if God yeah, you for... You did tell me about that in class one mm -hmm. time. How do you remember that? Yeah, when you were hurt. And uh -huh. so, <laughs> yeah, so last year. So, you know, for you, you know, they, whether it's a hamstring or, you know, they graph another muscle in. So you're rehabbing, for anyone that's under 40, you're rehabbing two injuries, uh -huh. you know. So, and hey, we have wholesale substitutions coming in here, Matt. So we'll say some numbers here. I think we have 22 for Plum, Allison Porter, I think, seven. Sit, was it 17? I think it was an 8. Gretchen? 8. 3. Isabella Dean. Yeah, I couldn't tell. And then Justina said 28. Also, Olivia Bigger, freshman. Yeah, it seems like they're giving the freshmen some experience in the playoffs. Sure, and even though there's 7 minutes left still, that's 7 yeah, minutes. that's crucial experience. No, and it seems like they're keeping the level up, which is good to have. Sure, and, and Kiski's probably substituted also. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah. we saw that. So, um, good first win, just like you guys. Yeah. Uh, first, you know, to they beat North Catholic, um, which is huge. So, 
you know, and then I guess, you know, the cliche, on to the next. Uh-huh. When's uh, the ne their next game? Thursday. So next you guys Thursday. play Wednesday against South Fayette. Yes. Yeah. The girls will play the winner of the 6-11 game, which is Hampton and Montour. And then I know the girls, you guys play on Halloween, right? Yeah. yeah. Go the semifinals, the, uh, semifinals be finals, And that's at a location to be determined. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys being the two seed, well, I mean, you'll, you'll get to wear your purple if you so choose. Yeah. You could get to pick the color. If the girls are playing Moon, I mean, the girl, the Moon being the two seed, Plum uh -huh. being the three seed, yeah. Moon will probably be in red, will be in white, uh, if that's who they play. That'd so. be a very good matchup. Sure, yeah. And so two years ago, actually, Emily's freshman year, they played at uh, Mars in the semis twice, I believe. And then last year was at West Mifflin. That's one Justino's favorite press box of all time. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have you guys come. I mean, we took the elevator up to oh, wow. the uh, third floor. And third so, floor? Third floor, yeah, third floor. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so when, oh, you guys, when you guys came up this <laughs> afternoon to help us set up, you're like, wow, hey, it's pretty nice up here. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> West Mifflin's uh, talking about floors take here. the elevator. Well, hey, true, so I'll tell you real quick, true story. When first time we went to Pine Richland, uh, beautiful press box. I'm like, hey, how? Where do we go? And uh, one of the gentlemen's like, oh, take the elevator up to the second floor. And I was like, oh, okay. So I took the elevator up to the second floor. They have like two row, like press row. They have like two rows. And I'm like, where do we film at? As so I'm looking at the Neil Walker room in front of me, and they're like, oh, you got to take the stairs up to the third floor. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. The third floor. So I went up to the third floor. Cross. Oh, there's a good cross. Shot on goal. Oh, score. It goes in. That is a nice shot. Couldn't see. Let's get a number, number there, guys. I'm watching. I'm watching. Is it? I can't tell. I can't, can't tell. <laughs> yeah, we're all, everyone's eyeing this up Turn. here. 21. 21. 21. 21. Uh, Alexis Rhoda. Great finish from her. So it's 9 nothing now, Mustangs. But, um, yeah, so we went to the third floor. And then at halftime, I came down to use the restroom on in the second floor. Yeah. And... <laughs> The guy was like, hey, bring your students down. You know, they had a ton of Chick-fil-A, pizzas, oh, wow. hoagies, and <laughs> in the Neil Walker room. <laughs> so I was like, uh, okay, sounds good. So, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, Pine Richland's like a, a, a college stadium, so. I've actually never been to their stadium. It's huge. So we're winding down the time now, as you can see in the stripe below. Okay. Three, we are, left. yeah. Now, when you look here, guys, the live stream is almost like instant replay for us. It is about 35 seconds behind. Okay. So, like during the football game on Friday, yeah. Like when we like that call with Nelson, uh -huh. there was no hold. Like we immediately turn and we watch the watch live the stream, yeah. and we're like. Oh, that, I mean, you can yeah, see, you can his, see his, jersey his jersey being held. That's absolutely pulled that. Pulled that, and not just a little tug. He pulled it for a good five yards. Mm -hmm. Good defensive mm -hmm. play there. I think the I think the whole Hemfield community even knew that no, was, a, was a flag. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Cavaliers, Lady Cavaliers, will have a throw in. Uh, or the corner, they are actually. corner. Oh, it's a corner. Yeah. Okay, yeah. corner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good ball, huh? With a nice mm -hmm. header. Oh, that one back. Please. Yeah, but you can't tell from here. We always say that with <laughs> angles, guys. Like, you know, you can't a tell. Good oh, that's shot. A good shot. Yeah. Jess clears a goal post. Yeah, like you see that, and you're like, oh, that's close. Uh, I I, you know, these guys laugh at me for extra points. I'm like, as soon as they kick it, I'm like, that's good. And then we watch the refs yes. come right out. <laughs> no good. And you can't, you just can't tell, yeah, that looked you know, like from this angle. Oh, and there goes the Ooh, Mustangs. She She's closing her down. Uh -oh. oh, yeah, big times. Crosby's able to flag that. She's going. And she's played well tonight. I mean, Matt, you have the stats. I mean, Plum's yeah. put on 20 shots. 20 shots, wow. You know, or she made 20 saves. Um, so, I mean, so Plum's had probably, obviously, 29 shots then since yeah. it's 29 nothings or 29 nine <laughs> nothing. So... Good victory for the Mustangs, both boys and girls move on to the quarterfinals and continue the seasons. And 
And I know you guys want to definitely make it one of your goals, not only win the whip, you is to get to states. Yeah. yeah yes. Sure. Definitely and would be nice to see both boys and girls team go to states. And I don't understand, Fowler, there on the Mustangs. I don't understand why the girls this year, and I'm, usually it's pretty parallel, guys. It, the girls, four teams go, but for the boys, only yeah. three. Yeah, I don't, and that's the first time teaching here that I know that it's ever been changed like yeah. that. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, for the first time last year, I was surprised when they made us play a consolation game. That was, I think that was the first time I ever heard of that, actually. Sure. Now, Parker said that um, the Franklin, there was at least five players, student athletes out for the Panthers that had COVID or something that were yeah. sick and didn't play. They're, yeah, I read an article or an interview from their coach saying that, like, 19 players had flu-like symptoms oh, wow. and, like, one or two starters were out, but... And that's tough. And then yeah. you get down early, and you're at home. You start pressing. I think that I think they they went up first. I think. No, the finals one zero. Oh, I, think, I no, thought so. Was no, it two, two was one. it two, two one? Was it okay? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Soph so, sophomore from Montour, like Alvin, I think, scored scored a brace, two goals on him to goals, yeah. to shut him out. I think an early goal from from Franklin, like five minutes in, and then. I actually heard Colton Hudson uh, hit the crossbar five seconds left, uh, which was, can't do anything about that. That's like when Mars won the boys and girls, won the Whipple Championship. You know, I had a lot of friends that were at that Franklin uh, Mars game. They said Franklin just dominated, but then, Mars yeah. just had a couple chances the other Got way. That. Yeah. Capitalized. What can you do about that? And that is it. We got Mustangs nine, Cavs zero. What a great game by both teams, but Mustangs advance, taking the win, and we do not know who they'll play next, but they are playing Thursday back at home. So Yeah, hey, guys, thanks for coming on, and uh, this was fun. I hope uh, yeah, you have the opportunity to... Us. No, yeah, I hope you have the opportunity. It's a blast. Penn Trafford and Mars overtime right wow. now. Wow. Wow. And Plum kind of hammered Penn Trafford. I'm wow. curious to see yeah, how that, that plays was, out. Justine is all excited. I'm, ex shot I'm excited, <laughs> excited over here. Excited. Yeah. But no, you guys obviously will be here Thursday. You guys are obviously more than welcome to come. Oh, definitely. Uh, and join you. the broadcast. Yeah, I don't know about Ben, Luke. I mean, we were, <laughs> uh, yeah. we were having you come. Uh -huh. No, I'm just kidding, of course. We're going to have... No, you yeah. guys are more than welcome to come. This was fun. <laughs> Because uh, you know, obviously, more about soccer than I do, so um, that's helpful. But even the terminology, you know, like you got, I like the whole game. I never said line. You guys, oh hey, hey, she, you know, she broke the line there. Yeah. So you know, just that terminology is huge. Uh, and, uh, Justina showing us that the Franklin Regional Panthers advance, so they will play the winner of Mars and Penn Trafford because that's the winner of the. 8-9 game, so um, yeah, so Mustangs go, they've advanced to the quarterfinals, the Panthers uh, advanced to the quarterfinals, and obviously Plum section yeah. with Latrobe and Penn Trafford and Mars being zero, and again, we don't know, Ma Mars could have players out, Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, we don't know, I mean, you know, so who knows, but um, no, this was a lot of fun, and uh, obviously wish you guys the best on uh, Wednesday against Thank the you. South Fayette Lions. Get a little revenge there, hopefully, oh. uh, from a couple years ago. Okay. So, um, but yeah, that's it. Matt, anything you want to add? You guys, Ben, Luke, anything you want to add before we close it out here? Uh, I mean, nothing much. It seemed like it was a great game. Got, Plum just kept hammering it down and just kept closing the game out, which was, I mean, they couldn't do much, much more if the Cavaliers, and I mean, Plum played their game, and we got some of the Plum players dancing, all looking all excited about the win, which I hope everyone else is, and it was a great, just well done by everyone. Sure, as the uh, Lady Mustangs come over here to the side to the applause of the fans as uh, they uh, advance to the quarterfinals, so um, that's that. So uh, we will hopefully see the Mustangs on Thursday. Best of luck to you guys on Wednesday. Thank you. Hope we win in advance and make it to the semis. And uh, Matt, anything to add? No, it was a great game. And you know, the Mustangs performed and they did their did what they're known for and that's winning, so. Yes, Killing, Killinger with the hat trick, Wileski with two goals, uh, senior and junior scoring. So uh, all in all, a great game by the Mustangs. And once again, your final score tonight, 
is the Plum Mustangs 9, the Kiski Area Cavaliers 0. Good night, everybody.